hello guys uh, in this video we'll see that how we can use the price ratio analysis to find the expected price of a stock uh, for the purpose of this video i'll be using the uh, stock of walmart and use it the 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 historic values uh, for the walmart to find the expected price of the uh, uh, of the walmart stock by the end of 31st december 2020 so our learning objective is simply that how we can find the expected price of a stock using value line investment report so i'll be using the value line investment reports uh, they are uh, the uh, the the value line uh, uh, covers almost 1700 companies and issue the investment report about these 1700 companies and the good thing about these reports are these this that they are one page report and every important thing is just mentioned on the one page and i will show you very quickly uh, in fact not quickly uh, after two three slides i will show you that how these value line reports look like so first of all what is price earning ratio so price earning ratio simply means that like uh, that how much the investors are willing to pay for each dollar worth of uh, earnings uh, per share like uh, that in order to uh, get that one dollar uh, earning from a share how much they are willing to pay if that price is very high then these such stocks are usually considered as a growth stock because just think that if there are same earnings for the two stocks but price of one share is very high it means that investors are expecting that these share, the 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 growth earning growth of the this share will be very high compared to the other uh, stock right so it simply show how much investors are willing to pay to earn each dollar generated by company share uh, for example now if the stock price is 250 and earnings per share is dollar 5 uh, then the price running ratio is 50 and again both in the numerator and denominator we have uh, uh, the the per share uh, price in the numerator and in the denominator we have a per share earning so everything is on per share basis and as i just mentioned in, uh, that the if there is a high pe ratio then these are called growth stocks and uh, if the the ratio is low then such stocks are called the value stocks because uh, th these are relatively cheap given the price for the same level of the earning uh, uh, so it is considered that these are value investments because you do not have to pay much more price to earn the same one dollar earn, like earned by the by by each year so these are called low pe ratio uh, 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 the low PE ratio stocks are called value stocks. So important thing is uh, to remember is this that all the time, uh, like when we are talking about the growth stock and value stock, this is just like the labeling right now. Only the time will tell which stock is actually the turned out to be a growth stock and which stock it uh, turned out to be a actual value stock. Because uh, we cannot, uh, uh, it's it's difficult to compare the companies with different p ratios so many time investment managers they actually calculate the peg ratio and the peg ratio is actually in the peg ratio we divide the pe ratio with the the growth uh, the expected earning uh, growth rate and given the everything is equal the low peg ratio means that these stocks are relatively uh, cheaper to buy given the uh, the increase in the expected growth of the earnings now if you have value line investment reports so i'm going to show you the value line investment report and these uh, these report looks like this so this is the investment report for the walmart so this is just a one page report and this is the latest report uh, which I have downloaded from the value line uh, platform and this is just one page and all the relevant informations are given on the one page you can see the sales per share cash flow per share earning per share likewise if you see this is the payout ratio and then you have return on 
uh, equity so everything is given on just this one page this is the growth rate of the sales the expected growth rate is 4.5 then for the cash flow is 5.5 uh, the earnings growth rate is 7.5 so everything is on this one page and we can use this to find the expected price and uh, of the walmart stock or any stock uh, if we have these reports available uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, any particular stock uh, for for uh, because this is the latest report and we have a data up till 2019 for 2020 and 2021 this is the the this is the uh, estimations uh, the 2020 is not yet closed because when i'm recording this video it's 13th of july 2020 so 2020 is not actually closed so this is just the estimation that what will happen by the end of the year 2020 and by the end of the year 2021 so the actual historic data is only we have up till 2019 in these uh, value nine investment report for the walmart and we will use that to find the expected price of the walmart stock uh, by the end of 31st december 2020 and we use three methods uh, the the price to earnings per share price to cash flow per share price to sales per share right and uh, uh, if you see i have uh, made an excel sheet over here uh, in the excel sheet so this excel sheet is showing me the the number and these numbers i have taken from the walmart right so you you can see that this is 15.5 over here for 2000 and this this is not actually like i wanted to say this is 2015 actually right so 2015 2016 17 18 and 19 and over here we also have 2015 16 17 18 19 right so if you see this then we have a price earning share 15.5 16.2 for 2016 for 2017 we have 18.6 which is also over here for 2000 18 we have 18.7 which is also over here so i have simply taken the numbers for from here and for 2019 we have 22.3 so this is the pe ratio can you see that it's written pe ratio over here and the earnings per share ratio is also taken from from here if i'll use this can you see this this is earnings per share and i simply took this value from the earnings per share over here right and using this i know what is the formula we can use to find the uh, the expected price and this formula is given over here right so that expected price is equal to the historic pe ratios historic pe ratios multiply with the projected earnings per share so current projected earning per share we can calculate by multiplying the the current earnings per share with one plus the projected earnings per share growth rate and this will give us the the expected price if we'll multiply this historic p ratio multiply by the current earnings per share multiply by one plus growth rate of the earnings per share right so uh, uh, in case of walmart again this is the that the same data which i was earlier showing you on the pdf file i have these p ratios right so this p a ratio you can again see double check this number over here this one 15.5 all the way to 20 uh, 15.5 for 2015 all the way to 22.3 for 2019 so you can see it's over here, over here as well, right? So if I take average, the PE ratio, average PE ratio is 18.26. So in order to earn one dollar um, um, of uh, one dollar earned by each share of the Walmart, people are willing to pay 18.26 dollars, right? Uh, the investors are willing to pay 18.26. Now, in case of earnings per share, we have this earnings per share, and again, it is coming from this value line investor report. So for 2014, it should be 15.05, which is 
which is the same over uh, sorry uh, earnings per share for 2015 sorry it's 15 not 14 15 it's 4.57 and this 4.57 is also over here right you can see that this one right and then we have for 2016 4.23 which is also over here 4.23 likewise for 2019 4.93 4.93 now if we multiply the the current earning per share with the expected growth of the earning per share we will get the projected earning per share right so this was actually the formula if we go and see this this is the formula that projected earning per share is actually the current earnings per share multiplied by one plus projected earning per share growth rate and once we have the projected earning per share and we multiply it with the historic price earning ratio so in order to get the historic price earning ratio we need to take simply the average of the price earning ratio right and if we have that average and how we can find that average it it's again it's simply over here uh, this thing right so all this the p ratio if we add them together divided by 5 because we have 5 p ratios from 2015 to 2018 we got the average 18.26 so if we'll multiply it with now the projected earning per share which we can get by multiplying the recent earning per share this is from 2019 which is 4.93 on the value line investment survey you can see for 2019 we have 4.93 if we multiply it with one plus the growth rate the expected growth rate of earnings per share we can easily find the uh, the the projected earnings per share and what is the growth of the earnings per share on the value line investment survey we can see that the for the earnings the expected growth rate is this 7.5 this is 7.5 right for the for the next year for the future years right so 7.5 if we'll multiply that 7.5 with the recent earnings per share 4.93 you can pause off the video over here and you can do the calculation so if we we'll multiply uh, over here the recent earning per share which is 4.93 from the year 2019 one plus the growth rate of the uh, of the earnings per share which is 0 0.075 remember this decimal of 7.5%, uh, uh, the 7.5% the in the decimal, it is 0 0.075, we'll get actually 5.299. So this is our projected, projected earnings per share. If now we multiply this for 5.5, Five nine with the average of the last five years of earnings per share will get the expected price of the Walmart according to the PE ratio, right? And that if you simply multiply the eighteen point two six multiply by the five point two nine nine, uh, I'm right now doing it on the calculator as well. I got ninety six point seven seven. So the expected price of the walmart share according to, to the pe ratio is 96 dollar 0.77 and right now i think the walmart closed at a lot, about 129.7 so it means according to this model the walmart is an overvalued stock and one should not invest in that right now this is only one way we can do the analysis using the price to uh, to uh, cash flow per share uh, basis as well so we can use the price to cash flow per share ratio uh, and uh, many analysts actually do these analysis together uh, the reason is this that if the cash flow uh, per share is uh, a low number it means that the earning quality is uh, not good because might be earnings is a lot and there are 
lot more earnings which are not converted into the cash flow so if the the uh, the earnings per share and cash flow per share they are relatively close it's it's a sign of good um, uh, earning quality so uh, it's a good quality earning and uh, that is the reason why many analysts actually they, they do this analysis together now let's take the numbers for the uh, for the it, like from the uh, from the value line investment survey in order to conduct the price to cash flow per share uh, ratio so for that purpose we have to go to the value line investment survey again and you can see that there are there is pe ratio but there is like you, you do not find the the price to cash flow share ratio directly right so this is an issue so what we can do it over here we can see that there is actually a cash flow per share ratio uh, like this one cash flow per share right and can we use this um, to find out our um, the, the desired ratio so look over here again in the excel file what i have done so in the excel file you can see that we have cash flow per share this number and also sales per share so this column is actually the sales per share and again it has uh, like i have uh, uh, i fed this number from the value line investment report so this was the cash flow per share for 2015 because uh, 15 16 17 yes 2015 it was uh, 7.64 so if you go and check my excel the cash for the cash flow it's also 7.64 and then 7.72 likewise over here 7.72 so this is for the cash flow so i fed all the numbers for the cash flow over here right for the sales per share this is the this line uh, this one this line right so again for the 2015 it is 152.48 so it's written over here 152.48 and all the way up till 2019 i have uh, already fed the numbers over here so this is 185.02 for the sales per share and this is 185.02 for the sales per share now in order to find the price to cash flow per share ratio why we are fi finding it the same formula like we need to uh, multiply the historic value of the price to cash flow per share ratio with the projected value of the cash flow uh, per share right so in order to do that i need to find first price to cash flow per share ratio but this is not directly given anywhere over here right so we can see that price to earning ratio is given but price to cash flow per share is ratio is not given so what can i do if i want to find the price to cash flow share right this one price to cash flow right all i i can do is this that i uh, need to i can multiply the price to earnings price divided by earnings per share and multiply it with the earnings per share the same thing what is in the denominator now it is in the numerator divided by cash flow per share right in this way i will end up getting what i will end up getting price to cash flow per share that's it simple right the issue is this that the price to cash flow per share is not directly given in the in the value line but we need that number in order to find the expected price according uh, uh, like uh, in order to uh, find the expected price of the walmart using price to cash flow per share ratio right so if we do that what i all have done i have if you see c11 multiply by c12 divided by c13 so c11 means price to earning ratio for 2015 i multiplied it with the earnings per share and then divided the earnings per share with what 
with C13, which is cash flow per share. And this is how I ended up getting my price to cash flow per share for 2015. The same step I have conducted for 2016, 17, 18, and 19. And then finally took its average. And this average we want. We want this average because we need to use this in the formula. And what was the formula? This is the formula over here. You can see that. This formula. Historic price to cash flow per share multiplied by the cash flow per share into 1 plus expected cash flow per share growth rate. Right? In other words, the cash flow per share into this thing. This thing into 1 plus expected cash flow per share growth rate will give us what? It will give us the projected cash flow per share, right? So once we have that, we can multiply it with this historic average of the cash flow per share, 10.28. We simply added all of them together and divided it by five and got the, the average over here, right? So now, how can we find the projected cash flow again ca recent cash flow per share what was the cash flow recent per share 12.23 multiply by the ex ex estimated growth of the cash flow per share and from the value line we can find this over here cash flow per share which is actually 5.5 5.5 this one this one not not this which is getting selected again and again this is earnings this one five oh this one five point five right five point five i hope you understood it it's five point five right this one where i have black arrow right so if you multiply five point five with so you again it has to add one into it one plus point zero five five multiply it the recent cash flow per share so the recent cash flow per share is 8.9 for 2019 right again right I, we we are the we are using the previous number from 2019 so this is uh 8.9 cash flow right so multiply by 8.9 my projected cash flow is 9.389 and if i multiply it with the average of price to cash flow share this one this one multiply 10.28 i got 96.524 right almost 51 right 96.52 uh, i think uh, there is some rounding of issue. So, 5.1, 96.51. And this is how I found the price using the price to cash flow per share for the Walmart stock by the end of 31st to, uh, December 2020. This is the estimate based on the historic values coming from the value line investment survey. And sorry, my battery is running low. Uh, and finally, in the same way, like I have done for the uh, um, for the cash flow, we have to do the calculation using the sales per share because price to sales per share ratio is not directly given over here. So we cannot simply feed in the number and take their average. So what have we have to do? We have to simply write sales per share first, like this, which I already told. This is written over here, this one, for the years 2015, 16, 17, 18, and 19. You can compare the numbers, right? So I do not know whether you can see that, but this is for 2019. Uh, so for example, 2015, we have 152.48 as sales per share, and this is the same thing over here, right? So for four years i have a uh, five years i have uh, fed the numbers uh, of the sales per share from value line investment survey reports and then what did i do i multiplied the price to earning ratio which is again coming from this this column 
uh, this row, this this one, and multiply it with the with the ratio of earnings per share divided by the sales per share. Right? This is the same thing. Like what I am I am trying to say that the if you multiply price divided by earnings, multiply by earnings divided by per share divided by the sales per share so your this thing this numerator and this denominator will cancel and you will end up getting the same thing which is price to you will end up getting price to sales per share ratio and this is what we need for each of this these five years 2015 to 2016 and then add them together and will take its average right so 0 0.46 0 0.44 0 0.49 0 0.51 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.51 0 0.59 and if we take its average it's 0 0.50 so this is the average and now by this time you will understand that in order to find the expected price what we have to do we have to multiply this expected price 0 0.5 5 this expected price 0 0.5 with the one with the sorry not one which is with the recent uh, uh, with the recent sales to uh, to uh, uh, sales uh, uh, to uh, the sales to per share ratio and that is basically we are getting over here which is 185.02 so 185.02 multiply by the expected growth of the sales to per share ratio one plus what is the expected growth again from the value line this number is for the sales is 4.5 percent so in other words 0 0.045 right so 0 0.045 and this will give us 96.67 dollar according to the 96.67 dollar according to the sales uh, uh, the expected price of the Walmart according to price to sales per share ratio, right? Again, it's some rounding off issue, but it is almost near 96.54, right? Do your calculation using these numbers. Uh, you can see that this is the recent sales per share. This is the uh, growth and my average was 0 0.50. And this is definitely a rounding off issues. If you simply feed in this 0 0.50 over here and then 185. 5.02 coming from G14 and then finally 4.5% it will most probably give you this this number right so just do this calculation on your own based on this data and you will be able to find our range uh, of the price of the Walmart according to this price ratio analysis and we use three measures price to earning rate, uh, per share price to sales per share and price to cash flow per share and this is how we were we were able to find the range of the walmart stock so coming back to the slides now coming back to the slides now so according to the earnings per share i got 96.77 according to the uh, to the to the cash flow this one per share my price turned out to be 96.51 according to the sales uh, uh, price to sales per share ratio my price turned out to be 96